Are you on consent? I am. I'm, I'm not presenting. You're not? Yeah. Well, yes, I, don't work for us exactly. I don't think we've talked about it. They're on board with us, and we don't think there's, 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 there's any cost. Good morning. Would like to uh, begin this uh, appropriations committee hearing as a subcommittee. Uh, do encourage my colleagues to come on down so that we may establish a quorum. Today, uh, Mr. Hill will be joining us, uh, substituting Mr. Tarico, and Ms. Lowenthal will be joining us, substituting for Mr. De Leon. With that, uh, I see Mr. Cook in the audience. Mr. Cook, come on up. We're going to go ahead and start as a subcommittee, and you will be presenting this morning on 2419, it looks like. Good morning, Colonel. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your promptness. I will be quick. The first bill I have is 2419. AB 2419 will make several minor technical changes to the contractor's state license board law. It will make changes regarding the Look name of the Oh, we can't. That's right. We don't have. I appreciate it anyway. Right. <laughs> thank, thank you, Mr. Amiano, for your enthusiasm. As soon as we establish a quorum, we will be able to move and hopefully. They're on their way right now. I hear them coming. It, it, will, it will make changes regarding the name of the board, would rename specified classifications of contractors, and would make other technical, non-substantive, and conforming changes to related provisions. This bill will have no significant costs associated I ask for your I vote. I have it with my, uh, my witness is Mike Brown, Executive Director of the Contracting State Licensing Board. Go ahead, sir. Mike Brown, representing Contractors Board. Uh, Assembly Member Cook said it all. We respectfully request your I vote. Thank you. Very good. Any additional witnesses in support? Witnesses in opposition? Department of Finance? Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman. Rob Schladel for the Department of Finance. Uh, our analysis indicates the bill would have minor and absorbable costs. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Cook, would you like to close on your bill? Nope. Just ask for your I vote. Thank you, Colonel. As soon as we have a quorum, we will uh, take a vote on your bill. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Mr. Jeffries. Uh, I, oh, I'm sorry. Go Mr. ahead. Chair, I have a committee bill, too. Very good. Let's, let's I, hear that. I apologize. Okay. This is a quick one also. I'm sorry. Uh, this bill is... AB 2785, as I said, this is a committee bill on <laughs> Veterans Affairs. It would require the Secretary of Veterans Affairs on or before 30 June 2011 and each year or every year thereafter to identify state agencies and departments that offer or provide services to veterans. For the purpose of entering into formal agreements that specify the respective roles and activities of the entities. This is a very, very simple bill. And the bill is there because of an audit that basically said the right hand is, doesn't know what's going on with the left hand and the ones who are being heard are the veterans. And this is to coordinate, make sure we're all on the same page in terms of the, the services, the information, so we can help our, our veterans, uh, particularly when they need it most. And I ask for your I vote. Very good. Uh, any witnesses in support or in opposition? Department of Finance? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, the department has indicated to us there would be a cost of $100,000 annually for the bill. Very good. Uh, Colonel, I think that has a uh, due pass recommendation. So as soon as we uh, get our folks here, we'll go ahead and take a, that measure up. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you, sir. Mr. Jeffries. Good morning, Mr. Jeffries. Uh, 1648 is on consent with amendments, uh, and you've got 1896, uh, which is on suspense. That's correct. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair. Uh, presenting on 1896. Presently, uh, ABC issues two licenses to facilitate Internet retail sales of beer and wine. Uh, one license is a wholesale license, and the second is a retailer license. Uh, this bill creates a new limited off-site retail wine license with appropriate privileges and notification requirements designed to permit retail sales without the requirements imposed on a retail store, uh, which is open to the public. 
This will allow the ABC to more easily track who is selling wine and beer over the internet as well as make it easier for those who wish to do so. This bill also contains clarifying language to deal with AB 1191 and AB 59 which dealt with the use of passports and military IDs as proof of age to purchase alcohol. I have some uh, folks here to testify on the bill as well and uh, happy to answer any questions. Very good. Your first witness. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Matthew Botting, General Counsel for the Alcoholic Beverage Control. Um, Mr. Jeffries uh, just encapsulated everything. The only uh, thing I'd like to point out is that in the analysis that references 1,500 new licensees and costs associated with that, the 1,500 uh, count is really based on that's the total number of licensees we presently have with the combination type of license, uh, licenses. And we wouldn't expect all of them to migrate to the new license and we might expect some new licensees to come in with the new license. So I don't think the, real, the cost uh, associated with that is, uh, is significant. Um, so I'd just like to point that out to you. Very good. Thank you. Next witness. Uh, good morning, Chairman Fuentes, members of the committee. Paul Cronenberg on behalf of Family Winemakers of California. Um, we're in support of the bill. We echo what Mr. Jeffrey says. And Mr. Bodding is correct. There are currently, according to industry tallies, only about four to 500 of these actual 1720s that operate as virtual wineries. This bill would be designed to let them migrate and handle some uh, new applications. So we think the bill cost is just a little bit high in there. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Any additional witnesses uh, in opposition? Department of Finance. Mr. Chairman, our analysis indicates there would not be any significant cost to the state. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Mr. Jeffries, would you like to close? Just ask for an aye vote when the time comes. Very good. We'll take the measure up when we do establish a quorum. Thank you for your presentation. And the uh, item is a suspense candidate. Um, Mr. Ng. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members. I have two bills. I believe one is on consent, AB 2701, and I believe I'll just be presenting on AB 2789, which is our committee bill. And it has a due pass recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll make this brief. Members, AB 2789 uh, is an important bill. It will create uh, regulatory efficiency and increase consumer protection for non-bank money services under current law in order to offer money transmission services, issue money orders, and sell traveler's checks. California law requires three licenses, even though these t services are typically offered by the same licensee at the same location. California is one of the last states that continues to use this outdated duplicitous model of licensure for these services. This bill, under consideration, creates a unitary law, the Money Transmission Act, to regulate these services under one licensing law. Additionally, this bill will close uh, any loopholes in emerging technology by requiring that licensees have adequate net worth and reserve requirements when offering stored value cards and that DFI can exercise safety and soundness reviews for such products. Additionally, this bill requires, for the very first time, that licensees must inform customers of the contact information for the Department of Financial Institutions if they have a complaint. The bill will provide cost savings to DFI through streamlined, streamlined, through streamlined licensing and regulation. Respectfully ask for an I vote when the time comes. I have your uh, witnesses in support, with your permission. First witness. Yes, good morning, uh, Chairman Fuentes, members of the committee. Bob Garcia, I represent the Money Services Roundtable, one of the sponsors of the bill. Uh, the, uh, my client group is comprised of the larger money transmission companies. We have worked with DFI for over two years uh, to fashion this law. There is no industry opposition that I'm aware of. Uh, Consumers Union had some concerns. Those have been worked out. So uh, we urge your support of the measure. Thank Very you. good. Any additional witnesses in support or in opposition? Department of Finance? Mr. Chairman, we have minor and absorbable costs for this bill. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Ng. You're close. Respectfully request an I vote. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Good, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, all right. We're uh, looking. Thank you, Mr. Ng. We'll take it up when the time comes. Uh, looking for authors. Looking for uh, Mr. Chesbro, Ms. Evans, Mr. Ruskin, Mr. Bell, Mr. Kuratani. In the meantime, uh, Mr. Amiano, would you like to present on your bill? I would, but I don't, I don't have my witness here. We thought it would be a little later. Could I defer? Or it's, I know it's recommended for suspense, but. We'll go ahead and 
pass and retain on that okay. for the moment. Very good, Mr. Amiano. Uh, you will be presenting. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, for your accommodation. Uh, I present to you Assembly Bill 2145, Accidental Drug Overdose, which is entirely preventable, is the second leading cause of accidental death in the United States and the leading cause of death in California's uh, opioid using population, that's opiates. Drug overdose, overdose is, is a significant problem in many California counties and its effects are felt throughout all sectors of the state and nation. According to the most uh, recent report published by the California Alcohol and Drug Programs, there were 3,646 alcohol and drug related accidental overdose deaths in 2006 in the state of California. AB 2145 builds on the state's commitment to preventing drug overdose from opioids by expanding protections from civil or criminal prosecution to non-health care individuals who administered a naloxone in an emergency if they have received the proper training for practicing medicine <coughs> without a license. Additionally, AB 2145 expands the program statewide rather than restricting it to the seven counties authorized in the original act and removes the existing sunset date of January 2011 from the program. The major cost in the measure are due to the bill calling on the director of the Department of Alcohol and Drug Programs to establish annual reports on a drug overdose trend statewide and information on interventions that are effective in reducing the rate of fatal and non-fatal drug overdose. In many other states, this is standard practice, but in California, we have relatively little data on the overdose trends. We need to respond most effectively to the changing course of this growing epidemic. Pursuant uh, to AB 1695 in 2002, the Department of Alcohol and Drug Programs gathered information on overdose deaths in California for a five-year period. They have not released the data since then. Preventing op opiate overdose and treating overdoses that do occur on site represents significant savings. The overdose prevention program in my district for less than 80,000 a year has decreased county costs by reducing mortality and saving on hospitalizations and medical services. I have with me today to testify in support of the bill uh, and on behalf of the sponsor, the Harm Reduction uh, Coalition, Hillary McHugh. Good morning, I'm Hillary McQuay with the Harm Reduction Coalition. We've been running a drug overdose prevention education project in San Francisco in conjunction with the Department of Public Health for five years, and we have halved the overdose rates in San Francisco. But before we set up the program, we did a quite a bit of research looking into who was overdosing on what substances and where and in what circumstances, and that informed our program. Um, as we expand overdose prevention around the state and disseminate these programs, we know that we're dealing with a growing epidemic of overdose nationwide that's uh, primarily driven by a rise in the use of prescription drugs like Oxycontin. Um, we know that if California is following those national trends, that's also an issue here. But we don't really have very good data about who's using these drugs, whether they're being obtained legally or illegally, um, what specific populations are most at risk for the use of prescription drugs in California. For it, and it's, it differs geographically around the country. For example, in North Carolina, 75% of the overdose deaths are by people with prescribed drugs that were prescribed to them, whereas in Maine, most of them are illicitly obtained. So in order for us to uh, reach out to the other populations at highest risk, particularly elderly people, um, who are taking too many painkillers, and the younger women who are primarily using Oxycontin and some of the prescription drugs. We need much better surveillance data, so I hope that you will approve this program. Very good. Uh, very next witness, briefly, please. 
Nicole Wardleman on behalf of the City and County of San Francisco as well as the City of Berkeley. This program has saved both lives and funds in the City of San Francisco and we urge your support. Very good. Additional witnesses in support? Glenn Backus for Drug Policy Alliance in support. Robert Harris on behalf of the California Society of Addiction Medicine, the Addiction Medicine Treatment Specialists in California who think this is important to save lives. Very good. Additional witnesses in support? Witnesses in opposition? Department of Finance? Sorry, Mr. Chairman, I have no file on this bill. Very good. Mr. Amiano, you're closer. Thank you. Uh, given all these facts, I believe there are very strong reasons why this committee should allow for the eventual passage of this measure, and I would be happy to uh, uh, work with the chair um, on that. Uh, I think the cost we estimated would be about between 100 and 200,000. That's for the reporting. Uh, as, as essential as the reporting is, I would be willing to make a com a, an accommodation uh, to get removed from suspense. Thank you. Th thank Thanks you, Mr. Ramiano, for your presentation. Uh, that is a suspense candidate. Mr. Hernandez. I apologize, Ms. Evans, uh, I didn't see you in the audience, but Mr. Hernandez, let's go ahead and I think you only have one item here. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Uh, this bill, AB 2080, authorizes local entities to securitize a 35% interest payment guarantee issued by the federal government when a local entity opts to issue Build America bonds. Uh, as you know, these bonds are a new financing tool for state and local governments. Bonds which allow a new direct federal payment sub subsidy are taxable bonds issued by state and local governments that will give them access to conventional corporate debt market. The American Recovery and Reinvestment Act allows state and local governments to issue these bonds in 2009 and 2010. The issuing entity has the ability to either receive a direct payment in which the United States Treasury Department pays state or local government issuers a subsidiary of up to 35% of the interest payments of such bonds which is intended to lower the issuer's cost of funds or receive a tax credit in which the bondholder receives a tax credit equal to 35% of the interest of such bonds. Uh, I will note that this bill uh, just provides another option. Local governments will not be required to securitize these payments but they will have the opportunity to consider whether this option may work for the situation. Here with me today is Pat Moran, representing the California Public Securities Association, to provide answers and to answer any questions you may have, and I respectfully ask for your aye vote, Mr. Chair. Very members. good. First witness. Uh, Mr. Chair and members, Pat Moran with Aaron Reed and Associates, representing the California Public Securities Association. Won't be redundant. Dr. Ed explained the bill, and your analysis does a great job um, outlining the issues. Um, Allowing for this securitization of the guaranteed subsidy is just another financing tool for local governments to use to, uh, to finance the much needed infrastructure projects. Very thank good, you. thank you. Any additional witnesses in support? Witnesses in opposition? Department of Finance? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, we have no state costs for this bill. Very good. This does have a due pass recommendation, Mr. Thank Hernandez, you. so you're close. I respectfully ask for your eye vote, Mr. Chair and members. Very good. Thank you. We'll take it up when uh, when we get closer. Ms. Evans. Thank you. Apologize for that. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Chair and members, AB 2279 uh, is the bill I'm presenting this morning. Um, it authorizes the Director of General Services to sell to N Napa County 850 acres of state-owned property, which is a portion of Napa State Hospital. This is property that uh, Napa has leased for over 30 years um, for Skyline Park, which is adjacent to the hospital. Um, the, su the sale would be at no less than fair market value. Uh, and Napa County has an interest in ensuring that Skyline Park remains a park they have a transit, orient, uh, transit occupancy tax ordinance that uh, sets aside money to fund parks and therefore would be in a position to afford the property. Uh, so I have uh, Paul Yoder here representing Napa County to answer any questions. Very good. Your first witness. Mr. Chairman, other members, Paul Yoder here today on behalf of the Napa County Board of Supervisors would urge your I vote. Uh, as your analysis notes, Governor's veto of a similar bill was based uh, on something pertaining to CEQA. It was fixed in a bill by Mr. M Mr. Nestandi. We're very hopeful of getting this bill signed this year, and we'd urge your I vote. Thank very you. Very good. Any witnesses in opposition? Department of Finance? 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have no uh, specific state costs associated with this bill. However, we are concerned that it would deny competitive bid op opportunities in the sale of the land. Ms. Harkey. Um, thank you. Um, I have a question with regard to uh, my experience of local government. And once we announced that we, in fact, were interested in purchasing a property, it was pretty well known that it was a takings on the local side. And we could not do that except in, uh, in a closed session. If we announce here that the county is actually, you know, going to purchase this at fair market value, that kind of implies there'll be no potential to rezone it, and doesn't it deflate then the potential use to outside competitive bids? Um, Assemblywoman, I, I think the fact that the property is under lease until 2030 and has been a park for quite some time uh, probably mitigates against that. I think also the fact that right now there's depleted groundwater underneath and the fact that it's between a quarry uh, and a mental hospital, uh, a, a rock and a hard place, if you will, uh, <laughs> probably, uh, uh, thank you, everyone. Um, I, 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 I think that, that, I think it mitigates against the fair market value argument. I mean, it's, it's locked up for 20 years under lease right now, and uh, the county would just like to lock it up in perpetuity as a park, so. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Very good, Ms. Evans. We're gonna go ahead and establish a quorum. Madam Secretary? Fuentes? Here. Conway? Here. Amiano? Here. Bradford? Calderon? Yes. Cotto? Yes. Davis? Lowenthal? Hall? Harkey, yes. Miller, Nielsen, yes. Norby, yes. Skinner, Solario, yes. Torlikson, Hill. Very good. Uh, we've established a quorum. This bill does have a due pass recommendation. Ms. Evans, would you like to close? I respectfully ask for an I vote. Very good. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take that, uh, and it's out on a B roll call. Thank Very you. good. Uh, looking for, let's see here, Mr. Bell. Mr. Solorio made the motion and yes. Mr. Cotto made um, the second. Mr. Chairman, uh, if it's your pleasure, I'll, I'll begin with AB uh, 1599. Very good. M Mr. Chairman and members, uh, fetal alcohol syndrome is one of the leading known preventable causes of birth defects and developmental disabilities. Effective prevention, intervention, and screening can reduce uh, this unnecessary suffering while significantly uh, reducing long-term health care costs, a new federal rule change allows Medi-Cal to bill for screening and brief intervention services. In order to draw down the federal funds, AB 1599 would allow counties to provide the state match for screening and brief intervention services for women who are pregnant and of childbearing age. AB 1599 also directs the Department of Health Care Services to yeah. seek necessary federal approvals. The primarily one-time general fund costs are minimal <laughs> when you consider the potential savings to the state's health care costs to help prevent fetal alcohol syndrome, the number one cause of babies born with developmental disabilities. The, re the general fund costs will then be reimbursed uh, in, with this bill from the proceeds <coughs> of the county and state contributions. I request your I vote to consider this for the suspense file. Thank you. We have witnesses. Thank you. Nicole Wordelman on behalf of the city and county of San Francisco. With our universal health care system in San Francisco, we're ideally situated to draw down this federal money and provide these benefits to our residents. We urge your support. Angela Blanchard on behalf of the March of Dimes in strong support. Glenn Backus, Drug Policy Alliance in support. Robert Harris on behalf of the California Society of Addiction Medicine who's helped develop the SBIRT program across the country in support. 
Okay, looks like uh, one more in support, or would you? <coughs> Carolyn Jenna, California Medical Association in support. Okay, any others in support? Any opposed? Okay, Mr. Bell. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Madam Chair, uh, if it's your will, I will proceed to AB 2173. That'll be this fine. This is the Emergency Air Medical Transportation. Madam Chair and members, uh, AB uh, 2173 will provide uh, for increased Medi-Cal funding of emergency air ambulance transportation by imposing a flat $3 fee on each vehicle violation in California, with the exception of parking tickets. The Medi-Cal rates for air ambulance have not increased since 1993. The bill would provide supplemental payments to ambulance, air ambulance providers by generating revenues which will be matched with federal funds from the State Department of Health Care Services. Air ambulance services provide life-saving emergency transportation for the most critical patients from accident scenes directly to trauma centers and provide essential transportation services to critical patients with, when ground transportation is not fast enough. These critical service providers transport all emergency patients without knowing if the patient has any form of medical insurance or ability to pay for the service. The bill is supported by a wide range of emergency medical services providers, and I ask for uh, positive consideration while this bill is on suspense. And I have witnesses, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bell. Witnesses? Catherine Austin Scott representing the California Association of Air Medical uh, Services. Um, as the uh, as Assembly Member Bell said, um, these are critical life saving services from accident scenes. About 94% of accidents are caused by motor vehicle violations. Um, <clears throat> these providers do not, uh, they are not allowed to, nor would they want to, ask if the pr um, person, the patient they are picking up, can pay for the service. Um, the, the critical part about this fee is it brings down new federal dollars. It's a flat $3 fee, not a um, percentage of $10 or whatnot, um, but it will match new federal dollars under the Medi-Cal program um, and bring those dollars in to do supplemental payments for the providers, bringing their fees up from a 17-year um, freeze. Um, they have not received a Medi-Cal increase for 17 years. Um, there is no cost to the state. Uh, recent amendments uh, allow costs to be covered, um, and we ask for your positive consideration while on suspense. M Madam Chairman, members, Paul Smith with the Regional Council of Rural Counties representing the boards of supervisors of 31 rural counties. Two quick points. First of all, I want to thank the author and the sponsors for working with us. Counties uh, do have a role in collecting these um, fines and these monies, and we appreciate the, having the ability to recover our costs for that administration. Also on the general policy, um, uh, folks living in rural areas generally uh, benefit uh, immensely from having an adequate air ambulance structure. Anything we can do to enhance that is much appreciated and we remain in support and hopefully this bill moves forward. Okay, uh, other witnesses in support? Yes, ma'am. Madam Chair, thank you. My name is Chris Giller. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for California Shock Trauma Air Rescue. We're a not-for-profit uh, air ambulance organization serving uh, 27 counties with 11 helicopter and fixed wing bases throughout the state. Uh, we're here asking for your support for this bill as uh, both uh, Mr. Bell and, and my colleagues indicate the, there has not been an increase in the Medi-Cal Medi reimbursement for 17 years. Our service is obviously a very expensive service where our uh, current charges are only re recapped at about 10% of our uh, current Medicare rate. And so um, with that, we ask uh, for your support. There's a natural nexus between this bill and moving violations in that 94% of the moving violations incur a, um, or cause a traffic collision, which is what justifies our service. So thank you for your support. Very good. Any additional witnesses in support? Mr. Chair, members, Randy Perry with Aaron Reed and Associates. On behalf of the California Children's Hospital Association, we rely heavily on this air transport for our children that we take care of. Very good. Additional witnesses in support? Um, Let's go ahead and just uh, identify yourselves, please, and uh, let us know if you're in support. Uh, Graham Pierce, uh, Director for PHI, our medical in California, in uh, support of the bill. Very good. Patrick McCormick, PHI, our medical in support. 
Eric Lewis, PHIR Medical, in support of the bill. Christopher Hall, PHIR Medical, Northern California. Thank you for support of this bill. William Hinton with Mercier Services of California requesting your support. Jason Johnson, flight paramedic, Mercy Air, Southern California, requesting your support. Donna Kova, Chief Flight Nurse, CalSTAR, Air Ambulance, uh, Sacramento, requesting your support. Aiko Muna, I work for CalSTAR. I'm in support of the bill. Jennifer Whalen, I work for CalSTAR. I'm in support of this bill. Dennis Shipman with CalSTAR, uh, Foothill Counties. We urge your support of this life saving bill. Stephanie Stringfield, PHI Air Medical, in support of this bill. J.D. Phipps with CalSTAR, urging your support for the bill. Brad Mills, Chief Pilot, CalSTAR, urging support. Thank you. Very good. Any uh, witnesses in opposition? Department of Finance? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have no file on this bill. Very good. Mr. Bell, would you like to close? Urge your uh, support of uh, consideration of suspense file, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Uh, do you have any other bills that you're presenting on? Very good. Mr. Chairman, uh, if it's your will, I'll, uh, I would like to present uh, AB uh, 2274. And um, AB 2274 is um, uh, in-home support services. One of the fundamental principles of the in-home support services program is that recipients have a right to select their own service providers. Currently, this right applies in counties that use an individual provider model and in counties that use contract or managed care agencies as a means for administering IHSS services. AB 2274 would extend the right of provider choice to recipients who receive services from an entity entirely entity funded by the state section 1115 wa Medicaid waiver. While no such entities exist under the current 1115 waiver, the waiver expires on July 31st. The state is now developing a new 1115 waiver ap application. As part of the 2009-2010 budget, AB uh, X46 committed the Department of Healthcare Services to pursuing a section 1115 Chair, I'll waiver. Move the bill. Very good, that bill's been moved. It does have a due pass recommendation. Do you have any witnesses in support? Yes, sir, we have witnesses in support. I'd like to present my witnesses, thank you. Chair members, Robert Harris, on behalf of Service Employees International Union, who's one of the sponsors of the bill. And this is important to protect the, the primary right of uh, consumers via HSS. Thank you. Joe Von AG, representing United Domestic Workers AFSCME. We are also in support. Um, we think that it's important at a time like this, with all the major changes we've seen in the IHSS program, to try to get those things worked out um, while at the same time um, being prepared that if the Medicaid waiver does take place, it does not dismantle any, any further aspects of the program. Thank you. Very good. Department of Finance? Sorry, Mr. Chairman, I have no file. Very good. Mr. Amiano, would you like to move, uh, second this bill? Very good. The bill's been properly moved and seconded. Mr. Bill, would you like to close? Urge your I vote, Mr. Chairman. Very good. That bill is out on a B roll call. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chesbrough. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. I have uh, three bills, I think, to be heard. I'm waiving the bill that's pre presentation on the bill that's on suspense, and there's three, two on consent, I think. Very good. You've got uh, 2134 on consent, it looks like, and the other two, 2351 and 2615, are due pass recommendations. Okay. So I'll just present on uh, 2351 and 2615. You said that you did say, I did hear you that 2134 is on consent. Uh, let's see here. 2351 is due pass as recommended. 2615 is due pass as recommended. 2645 is on consent. 2675 is on consent. So and what if about we just present on uh, 2351 and 2615, we'd be very appreciative. But 2134 is on consent as well? Yeah, yeah. That's correct. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, AB 2351 would authorize CAL FIRE to Mr. collect recreation. Mr. Chair, I'll move the bill. Very good. The bill has been properly moved and seconded by uh, Mr. Cotto and Mr. Amiano. This is one of the rare bills that offers a budget plus. I ask for your I vote. Very good. Witnesses in support and in opposition, Department of Finance. Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry, I have no file on that bill. Very good. Uh, the bill has been properly moved and seconded. Uh, Republican roll call for that one, Mr. Chesbrough. Conway? Aye. 
Conway I. Harkey. <coughs> Miller. Nielsen. No. Nielsen, no. Norby. No. Norby, no. Very good. That bill is out. Uh, 2615, Mr. Chesbrough. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, AB 26, uh, well, I've got the wrong one here. Ocean Fisheries, okay. AB 2615. Uh, <laughs> second. Bill's been properly moved and second, Mr. Chesbrough. Your presentation? Ask for your aye vote. Very good. Witnesses in support? Witnesses in opposition? Department of Finance? No file, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Conway? That bill is out on a B-roll call. Thank you for Thank your you very, very eloquent presentations, Mr. <laughs> Chesbro. I'm always a wordy kind of a guy. Mr. Uh, Victor Manuel Perez. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members. Good morning. Next time we have a couple bills. Very good. You've got uh, 1846 on consent. Uh, you've got a due pass recommendation on 2037 and 2147 and a suspense candidate. What would you like to present on? If I can present on 2037. Good. Okay, thank Floor you. Floor is yours. Uh, AB 2037 is an air electricity air pollution bill. Air pollution does not recognize international borders. Uh, air emissions produced by power generation plants on the other side of the California border create negative impacts on the air quality in the age adjacent air basin air sheds affecting public health and the quality of life for the residents of the region. Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, if I may, I'd like to move the bill and compliment the author for bringing this bill forward. Very good. That bill has been moved. And Mr. Amiano, would you like to second that bill? Very good. That bill has been properly moved and seconded. Do you have any witnesses in support? Yes, I do. Mr. Bill Doran from Imperial County. Very good. Mr. Chairman, members, Bill Doran, Imperial County, we're in support and also the sponsors. Thank you, Mr. Bill. Uh, any witnesses in opposition? Department of Finance? No filed. Very good. I agree with Mr. Cotto. It's a very good bill. Uh, bill is out on a B roll call. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. If we can proceed with uh, AB 2147, Mr. Chair. I'd like to start by stating that we are taking the committee's offered amendments. Very good. That ha has a recommended uh, due pass uh, with amendments. And uh, we are reassuring the language that was taken out due to the oversight. Uh, AB 2147 will ensure equitable access to safe routes to school funds. Uh, doing this will improve the safety and health of children in California. This bill does two important things. Uh, first, AB 2147 allows Caltrans to give added consideration Chairman, to the again, project. thank the author and I'd like to move the bill. Very good. The bill's been moved. A good no. And uh, properly seconded. Do uh, you have witnesses in support? Yes, I do. I have uh, representatives from Policy Link and CRLA. Very good. I'm Solana Rice. Solana Rice with Policy Link. Jennifer Hernandez, California Rural Legal Assistance Foundation, in support of the bill. Very good. Any additional witnesses in support? Witnesses in opposition? Yes. Department of Finance? We have no cost for this bill, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Conway. Very good. This uh, bill needs a roll call vote. Uh, Madam Secretary. Conway. Aye. Conway, aye. Harkey. No. Harkey, no. Miller. Nielsen. Aye. Nielsen, aye. Norby. No vote. Norby, no. No. Yeah, he's not voting. Oh, not voting. Norby, not voting. Very good. That bill is out. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. Thank you for your presentations. Uh, is it Adams next? Mr. Adams. Yeah. Wasn't just a happy coincidence. Very good. Would like to, as Mr. Adams is preparing himself here, encourage Mr. Davis, Ms. Skinner. Mr. Calderon, Mr. Hill, Ms. Lowenthal, Mr. Bradford, and Mr. Torlickson to uh, check into committee here. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Adams, uh, you may proceed. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I have three bills before you. I waive presentation on 2718, and I would like to present on 2269, even though I am aware that it is going to suspense, and I would like to present on AB 2007. 
If I may, sir, I want to go ahead and start with 2269. This is the heart presumption bill that is headed for suspense. The heart presumption bill it seeks to create a level of equity and now um, not to get in too fine of a policy point uh, since we had that discussion already in a policy committee. One of the frustrations I have here is in trying to create this equity. I think that the analysis that was done far and away overstates the amount of money that could potentially be spent. It roughly estimates somewhere between 3.5 to $7 million and it presumes a whole host of things that make that possible that don't exist in the bill. For instance, for the 850 so-called potential people to be covered by the, by the bill as uh, DDS and DMHC, or excuse me, um, DMC has said, or DMH has said, it would have to presume that the bill goes retroactive. The bill does not do that. Nothing in this bill would, would cause retroactivity to take place that would allow that number to grow so large. I have Kobe Pizzotti here who is the sponsor of the bill, his organization, to sort of speak to that point if I may, Mr. Chairman. Uh, your first witness. Mr. Chair and members, I'm Kobe Pizzotti with California Statewide Law Enforcement Association. Um, when this bill was written in 1967, there, or the original heart presumption bill was written in 1967, only a Tascadero State Hospital was a forensic mental hospital at the time. Now there's four other mental hospitals and several other DDS facilities that have for forensic commitments to them. Uh, to this case, we're trying to make a, a certain equity where the hospital police officers at all the institutions are treated with the same, uh, with the same kind of heart presumption as was intended by the legislature in 1967. Yeah. So, the, I. Also, as to the point on Mr. Adams said, uh, we have about 540 hospital police officers that are not working at a Tascadero State Hospital who already have this heart presumption. Uh, I don't see how the number could be so high uh, when there was only uh, nine heart presumptions used in the last five years at a Tascadero State Hospital. So that, the, that's how we got our numbers and that's all I'd like to say. In essence, Mr. Chairman, I just think the numbers are far and away over exaggerated. That doesn't mean that even if the numbers were brought down to something that resembled a closer approximation, that this still wouldn't be a candidate for suspense. So I don't argue that point, but I would hope that in your consideration before the suspense file is heard, that you may uh, take a look at whether or not there is some validity to the point I'm raising and give this bill your honest consideration. Very good. We will go ahead and take a look at that. Thank you for your presentation. Witnesses in opposition, uh, Department of Finance. Mr. Chairman, we uh, indicated that uh, there would be some potential additional general fund costs, but they are not determinable at this time. Very good. Mr. Nielsen. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to thank the author and the sponsors for this bill. Uh, having represented two of the hospitals that would be affected here, Napa State Hospital and, and, uh, and Sonoma State, I will attest to the circumstances under which these individuals, these officers uh, work and the risks uh, that, uh, that are incumbent with just uh, in the nature of those institutions. And, uh, I would argue for favorable consideration on suspense as well. Very good. We'll go ahead and take a look at that, Mr. Adams. Uh, your next bill. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate your time on that one. AB 2007 is the uh, result of the FPPC engaging in what I'm calling gotcha politics. They have essentially given us an opportunity to try to be as transparent with the public as possible with our gift reporting requirements. But in so doing, whenever a report has been misfiled or there is some kind of discrepancy between what may be alleged uh, took place and what actually did take place, there is no legitimate opportunity for a member of the legislature or a reportable person to go forward and actually remedy that before a notice of violation has been sent out. Why does that matter? The notice of violation is a public record. So even if you can successfully prove that you did not partake in a gift that was alleged that you did, you still have this public record saying you, were, you violated the law. Mr. Chairman, that is not the appropriate manner in which the, the Fair Political Practices Commission should be acting, or I believe that the intent of the Political Reform Act intended. To that end, we're simply asking that the FPPC post the same data that they're using to determine whether we've received gifts or not on the website so that we may view that and cross check it with our own da uh, data and our own facts to make sure that what we're reporting accurately reflects what the FPPC has as well so that we can be as transparent with the public as possible. There is a question about cost in this bill. I think the analysis indicates it could be up to about $90,000. Here's the thing. The, bill, the analysis also indicates that the bill is pot potentially redundant because a lot of this work's already been done. So if the work's being redundant, then how can you also have $90,000 of additional cost? I have a member of my staff who'd be happy to do the full-time position for $40,000 a year, Mr. Chairman. So if we'd like to do that, I'd be happy to offer that person up. 
Mr. Chairman, I think this bill is a worthy bill of consideration. I think it creates transparency. I think it makes us more honest with the public, and I think it's a bill worthy of, of an I vote. Very good, Mr. Adams. That does have a due pass recommendation. Do you have any witnesses in support? No, ma'am. Witnesses no, sir. in, thank you. Witnesses in opposition? Department of Finance? Mr. Chairman, the Commission's indicated to us a cost of $87,000 a year. Very good, Ms. Harkey. I want to tell you that before I came into this hearing, I was, op I was opposed to this. After hearing your reasons and all the rationale behind it, I couldn't agree more. Uh, you know, we had notices Chairman. sent out and fines, I believe it was well, just this last, uh, this last year, of people for accepting gifts, and they were fined. Uh, $600 in some cases and more for things that they really didn't even know about or had not accepted. So, uh, you know, understanding now the purpose behind this, I think it, it makes a lot of sense. And, and I appreciate you offering your staff. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good. Any, uh, Mr. Chairman, I also want to commend the author. I heard it in committee, and, and uh, it's a step in the right direction. It gives us an opportunity to make sure that we clarify any mistakes uh, after the fact that it's too late. So, <laughs> so I would move the bill, Mr. Chair. Very good. Mr. Amiano. Um, I'm wondering if offering up the staff is <coughs> a reportable gift or. <laughs> That's a great second, Mr. Amiano. The bill's been properly moved and seconded. Uh, bill's out on an A roll call. Thank you very much. Very good, Mr. Nilo. <coughs> You know, Mr. Chair, they say half of uh, success in life is just hanging around at the right time, so that's what I did. You were with last on the to, list there, Mr. Nilo. That was a good move. With regard to Mr. Adams' bill, uh, I'll be looking for work around December of this year, <laughs> and by the time we're done here, $40,000 may indeed be an increase in pay for me. So uh, just want to throw that Sadly, out. Sadly, I think we all agree with you, Mr. Nilo. But, uh, uh, you are presenting. Back to the issue at hand. <laughs> Uh, I'm here to uh, present AB 2328, pretty simple bill. It just uh, uh, would require that uh, a seat on the Air Resources Board uh, be reserved for a small business person. Uh, this passed the uh, policy committee and uh, it has uh, virtually no uh, financial impact, uh, so I would hope to have a support here. Uh, but on the policy side, I'd just quickly say that there are um, already uh, seats on that board uh, that uh, advocate for uh, the benefits of uh, uh, air quality regulations uh, and the like, uh, all uh, uh, constituencies that uh, 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 receive those benefits. What is lacking is a seat specifically reserved uh, for uh, those that uh, end up bearing uh, the, the bulk of the costs of the implementation of of the regulations, as well as the benefits, of course, the small business and business community generally. So uh, um, I would ask uh, for your support so that we can move this bill uh, onto the floor. Very good. The bill does have a due pass recommendation. Uh, witnesses in support? Witnesses in opposition? Department of Finance? We have no cause, Mr. Chairman. Very good. The bill's been moved by Ms. Conway and seconded by Mr. Miller. Uh, very good. That bill is um, out on an A roll call. Minus Amiano. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you. Looks like Furutani. Mr. Furutani. The floor is yours, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the Appropriations <coughs> Committee. Existing law requires that the Board of Governors of the California Community College System to maintain a process for consultation with institutional and organizational representatives of the community college community, such as teachers, administrators, and classified employees. The purpose of the council is to strengthen communications, policy development, and to ensure the quality and effectiveness of college operations and programs. AB 2482 would require the board to add one more classified member for a total of two representatives on this council. 
classified employees represent 31% of California Community College District employees. Adding one additional seat would Move make the bill. Thank you. Very good. Has the bill's been moved. It does have a due pass recommendation. Looking for a second? second. Bill's been seconded. Uh, do you have any witnesses in support, Mr. Ferguson? Yes, I do. Ms. Sanchez, here you go. Uh, Dolores Sanchez representing the California Federation of Teachers. We are the sponsors of the bill. We ask for your support. Very Thank good. You. Witnesses in opposition? Department of Finance? Sorry, Mr. Chairman, I have no file. Very good. The bill has been properly moved and seconded. Would you like to close, Mr. Furtani? I urge and I'll vote. Thank you, sir. Very good. That bill is out on a B roll call. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very good. We're now looking for authors. Um, Ms. Lowenthal, would you like to present on uh, your bill? I'm sorry, I'm for Mr. DeLeon. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Vice Chair Conway and members. AB 2358 clarifies that ammunition records cannot be provided to a non-authorized person or third party and that the records no longer required by law shall be destroyed in a Move manner. the bill. Very good. The bill has been moved. Mr. Tolerson, would you like to second? Second. It's been seconded. The bill it does do clarifying changes to uh, Mr. DeLeon's Assembly Bill 962, so it's technical in nature. Uh, any witnesses in support? Witnesses in opposition? Department of Finance? No file, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Would you like to close, Ms. Lowenthal? Uh, he respectfully asks for your eye vote. Very good. A or B? Bill's out on a B roll call. Thank you. Would you like my bill as well? Absolutely. Thank you. AB 2706 allows a homeless person to sue for enhanced civil damages when they're a victim of hate-based violence. Unlike an enhanced criminal penalty, which would impose a financial burden on the state, this places the burden squarely where it belongs, on the shoulders of those who think that homeless people are fair game. I ask for your eye vote. Very good. The bill does Move have a bill. due pass recommendation. has been moved by Mr. Amiano, seconded by Ms. Skinner. Witnesses in support? Witnesses in opposition? Department of Finance? Mr. Chairman, we have no cost for this bill. <laughs> Very good. That bill is out on a B-roll call. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Skinner. Very good, Ms. Skinner. It looks like you are presenting for uh, yourself, Mr. Jones, Mr. Speaker, and Mr. Tirico. I'm okay, hold on a minute. How do you know I <laughs> uh, Maybe, uh, I'm sorry, no, maybe you're not presenting for yourself. Do you have? I, I'm, I'm some other, I'm somebody else today. <laughs> okay. She's all well, sorts right now of folks I'm, today. Uh, Assembly Member Jones. <coughs> Who? I'm Assembly Member Jones. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, um, AB 1597, low-cost auto insurance. Well, the bill was previously on the consent calendar, so Great. Uh, very um, good. Looking for a motion. It would extend the sunset oh. date of the California low-cost auto insurance program. Very good. The bill has been moved by Mr. Cotto. Second. Seconded by Mr. Amiano. Do you have witnesses in support? Yes, I have a witness here in support. So David Link with the Department of Insurance. Um, we expect the bill actually to possibly save some costs in the in the long term. Urge your I vote. Very good. Wic uh, witnesses in opposition? Department of Finance? And no file, Mr. Chairman. Very good. The bill's been properly moved and seconded. Roll call vote for the Republicans, please. Conway? Aye. Conway, aye. Harkey? Harkey, no. Miller? Miller, no. Nielsen? Nielsen, aye. Norby? Aye. Norby, aye. Very good. That bill is out. Thank you, you now, very Mr. much, um, uh, 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 Speaker Perez. Very good. Um, Chair and members, I'm presenting AB 2324 on behalf of Speaker Perez. It creates greater security for California's public transit systems. The committee analysis recommended several amendments, which I'll accept on the Speaker's behalf as Very good. That amendments. does have a due pass recommendation. Move the bill. The bill's been moved by Mr. Amiano, seconded by Mr. Cotto. Witnesses in support? Yes, I have in support Lieutenant Wayne Billowit from the L.A. County Sheriff Department. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Members, Lieutenant Wayne Billow, and on behalf of sponsor Los Angeles County Sheriff Lee Baca, we urge your support. Thank you. Very good. Witnesses in opposition? Department of Finance? We have no state costs for this bill. Very good. That bill is out on an A roll call. Thank you very much. Now we're presenting on Mr. Tirico's bill. Yes. Um, 
Mr. Chair, members, this is AB 1983, Assemblymember Tarico. It adds the safely surrendered baby fund to the list of voluntary okay. contribution funds on personal Very good. That tax. bill has been properly moved by Mr. Cotto and seconded by Mr. Amiano. Please, please congratulate uh, uh, Mr. Tarico for bringing this ba bill back. He's worked very hard each year to get it done, and it's an important bill, and I move it. Any witnesses in support? Witnesses in opposition? Department of and Finance? Sorry, Mr. Chairman, no file. Very good. Before that you ask out for the roll, I'm call. asking for a, uh, to be amend the co-author. Very good. Well, uh, well what's your, good. your amendment is what? I'm sorry, you're asking to be added, added. as co-author? Yes. With Mr. Tarico's permission, of course. Yes. Very good. It, it's moved as uh, amended, and that bill is out on an A roll call. Norby, Norby not voting. Mr. Tarico's bill it is 1983. Mr. Norby, you can just uh, speak to the secretary here and we'll go ahead and uh, correct the record to reflect your vote uh, properly. Very good, Ms. Thank you Skinner. Very much. I think we're done here with you. Ms. Saldana. Uh, you're presenting on 2357, which was previously on the consent calendar. And I don't know why I was pulled. The floor is yours. Uh, uh, this is a good government Move bill. Move the bill. Transparency. Very good. The bill's been moved by Mr. Amiano, Ask seconded by Mr. Torlickson. Any witnesses in support? Witnesses in opposition? Department of Finance? Mr. Chairman, we have minor and absorbable costs for this bill. Very good. That bill is out on an A roll call with Ms. Harkey not voting. Very good. Mr. Swanson. Morning, Mr. Swanson. Morning, Mr. Chairman. You've got two bills, a suspense candidate, 1702 and 1756. Uh, both suspense candidates? Uh, no, uh, a due no. pass is, uh, yes. is a due pass recommendation on 1756. Y yes, uh, so we can do. Um, uh, Food stamps. Uh, yes, we want to do 1756 first, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Let's do Assembly Bill 1756. Okay, thank you. Which has a due pass recommendation. Move the bill. Very Second. good. The thank bill you. has been moved and seconded. Mr. Swanson, would you like to present on your bill? Yes. Briefly? Yes, very briefly, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this legislation is about removing the barriers once a person has paid their dues or his dues to society. Um, and it allows uh, families, especially children, to avoid being punished when their loved ones or parents return to the community. It allows the state to take advantage of the federally funded food stamp programs for ex-offenders. Uh, I think that it's a good bill. It will help us re lower our recidivism rate. Uh, and I ask uh, for your aye vote. Very good. The bill's been properly moved and seconded. Do you have any witnesses in support? Yes. Uh, Mike Carroll with the Western Center on Law and Poverty. Uh, we believe this is a, a measure that will actually draw down uh, tens of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in federal food stamp funding, all of it completely paid for by the federal government going into our economy. We think this is a good measure for both the ca state of California, the Treasury, and, of course, the families affected. We support the bill. Next witness. Glenn Backus for Drug Policy Alliance. Believe this is an important part of rehabilitation. Thank you very much. Witnesses in opposition. Department of Finance. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, I have no file. Very good. That bill is out on a B roll call. Thank you, Mr. Swanson, for your presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. B roll call. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the um, AB 1702, Mr. Chairman. If I, could if I could present on that. Please, And briefly. the reason uh, why it's important to present on this bill, and I appreciate the analysis. Uh, in the analysis, it says that there is a projected uh, cost, potentially uh, $456,000, but uh, it doesn't make reference to any of the cost benefit of, of, uh, of uh, this uh, bill. And I wanted to speak uh, to that, if I can, uh, briefly. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, AB 1702 simply allows community colleges to offer courses in correctional, uh, uh, correctional facilities and to be reimbursed at an appropriate rate. 
This bill does not ask the state to provide extra funds to the community colleges to offer these courses as they will have to fit any uh, offering an existing state allocation. This is, a, this is a very important point. Community college districts will not receive any additional funds to operate in a correctional setting. Uh, this um, will only use, they will only use money the state has already set aside for their district operations. I believe this bill will help correction, correction save money by reducing recidivism without dismantling current educational opportunities in CDCR, uh, the CDCR offers. The research clearly states that education keeps individuals uh, from reoffending, uh, and with a between 60 and 7 percent recidivism rate within three years, we uh, need to do all we can to help offenders become more productive, tax-paying members of California rather than costing us $45,000 per year. Uh, CDCR indicates that uh, 28,000 uh, parole felons return to prison within one year. Uh, if additional programs reduce this number by only 10 percent, it would stay, save the state of California $62 million from incarcerating costs alone, assuming a margin, assuming that this is even a marginal uh, uh, expense of $22,000 per inmate, not $45,000. If educational programs reduce this number by only 1%, it would save the state of California about $6 million a year uh, in, uh, in savings. So the four, $400,000 projected cost I, I think um, uh, is uh, acceptable uh, given the potential savings to the state. I would like my witnesses to self-introduce. Very good. Thank you. Mark McDonald, McCallum Group, on behalf of the Kern, Los Angeles, Peralta, Rio Hondo, San Jose, Evergreen, and West Kern Community College Districts in support. And I just want to make a couple points. Um, I think the Assemblyman um, expressed how this bill would actually present cost savings to the state fairly well. But current law creates a disincentive for colleges to offer credit courses. These are courses that inmates could actually be leaving um, their incarceration with college credits, with CTE skills um, that otherwise would not be offered in this setting because the reimbursement to community colleges is less than it is outside of the correctional setting. Um, second thing, there's some question as to whether community colleges would be over-appropriated funds because the courses would be offered in the correctional setting. Um, under the current funding formula, colleges are given a base allocation based on the number of colleges and centers that they have and then they're allocated funding per FTES for the students that they serve regardless of what setting they serve them in, whether that's on a K-12 school, um, a CSU campus, UC campus, or in a community center. Um, so I, I know this bill's going to suspense, but I would urge your uh, positive consideration as it moves through this process. Very good, thank you. Uh, next witness. Yes, Mr. Chairman, Bonnie Slauson representing the Community College League and the 72 community college districts throughout the state. Uh, we are in support of uh, AB 1702 as the author expressed. We do believe that in the long term there will be a cost savings. We hope that it will address uh, prisoner re rehabilitation and preparation for transition from prison to employment. We think that it is a key component to any prison reform that you have uh, going forward. And uh, as you know, these former inmates uh, have such challenges challenges getting employment and successfully tr transitioning to uh, life afterwards, and this will help. Thank you. Thank you. Witnesses in opposition. Uh, Department of Finance. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, no file. Mr. Nielsen. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to attest to the success of this. One of the concerns is historically about community college is chasing FTE, uh, you know, putting up gimmickry courses just to gain the FTE. I don't see this as being at all uh, a part of this bill. But I will attest that uh, in rehabilitation for inmates, the determinately sentence particularly that educational opportunities uh, particularly do give them a higher likelihood of surviving in the community. Uh, I think statistics uh, bear that, but uh, hundreds of thousands of them I've dealt with over the years would further attest to that. So I would be arguing that this give a favorable consideration, uh, particularly now where uh, necessarily uh, some of the rehabilitative opportunities are restricted. Uh, if I'm correct, a lot of these can be correspondence courses too, correct? Uh, sometimes you do have uh, teachers in the institution, but some can be for, by correspondence, am I correct? correct? 
And this does also have an institutional security value as well if the individuals are gainfully uh, disposed during the day, there's less opportunity for trouble. But most assuredly, uh, the uh, opportunities they have for upgrading educationally may inspire them to continue that uh, when they re reintegrate into society. So it is a good idea and it has proven useful. Hey, thank you, Ms. Nielsen. Ms. Harkey. Thank you. I, I too, like like the bill, I think it makes a lot of sense. And um, but what I would hope that I would have your support for going forward is th the understanding that the static accounting that we use uh, with regard to this uh, de this bill, determining whether or not there's costs associated with it, that there are other there are other savings, mm -hmm. uh, recidivism, and other that that can go forward. And the same is true for any private job creation we do here in this house. Oh. You know, tax credits, et cetera, to stimulate job creation because eventually, I mean, they are assessed also on a static analysis. And it's, it's really a shame because we do know that in certain instances there is a payback to the state or a lessening of costs to the state in both instances. So I commend you and hope we can work together. Thank yes, you. Yes, Ms. Harkey, thank you for those comments. It's, it's been, uh, as uh, the, the Vice Chair has indicated, the. Um, the Little Hoover Commission has said that uh, there is uh, benefits from education uh, in, in inserted, injected into the correctional facility. Um, we also, uh, UCLA did a study uh, in 2004 where it talked about the returns being quite significant also just from basic education, not the kind of educational opportunities that be presented by community colleges. And so with that being, uh, being the case, uh, it, it's clear uh, the, uh, we all want, we, we don't want the taxpayers to waste their money and, and we certainly don't want them to spend it over and over again for the same inmate. And so everything we can do to make sure that inmate becomes a product, productive citizen, we're trying to do that, uh, thereby, you know, reducing uh, the, the taxpayer's burden uh, with rising costs in the correctional, uh, correctional um, institution. So, uh, so I thank you for both for, the, for those comments and I hope that this bill is considered uh, uh, actually a cost savings uh, as it uh, works its way through suspense. And I, I would offer that as my, as my close. Uh, Senator Nelson, you had another comment? Yes, our analysis indicated a, an amendment should be uh, provided that allows the Tier 2 course to be reversed at Tier 2 level. Has that been accomplished in an amendment? Uh, I, we, we're, we're open to, to receiving... Uh, I, I don't have the bill language, so I don't know what it says, yeah. but the analysis doesn't... Yeah, there, there's essentially two levels of um, non-credit courses, um, the regular non-credit that is re reimbursed at the lower rate, and then an enhanced non-credit, so to speak, which are courses that lead to, jo excuse me, lead to job training skills or um, articulate on a career pathway or um, lead to credit courses. That was part and of a reform in 07. <laughs> exactly, SB 361, and, and we'd be happy to work with you on that and, yeah. and actually think that probably should be part of this. Yeah, we're, we're, we're open. Would you work with committee staff then? Yes, and so we're open there. as a matter, uh, if the matter successfully comes off suspense, we'd be willing to, to take that amendment uh, to move the matter forward. Uh, <clears throat> I, I would say, Madam Chair, that, that, um, um, uh, that it is important for us to become more proactive uh, and not sort of just sort of <laughs> accept things as, as they are because there's too much evidence now that if we do just a little, that we could actually end up saving millions and millions to the state and uh, 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 and prevent um, more people from reoffending, which makes the community safer. Thank you, Mr. Swanson. Um, uh, even though it's going to suspense, you've uh, uh, given us uh, much to think about this morning and thank all you. these, I think everything will be considered um, while you. on suspense, so thank you very much. I appreciate it, thank you very much. Okay, we have uh, Ms. Ma. Good morning. Good morning. Presenting on 2240, your is that the first yep. bill? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, members. AB 2240 will create a modest fee Move increase the bill. to ensure the continuation of the California Department of Food and Agriculture's Market Enforcement Branch. With me here today is Noelle Kremers with the California Farm Bureau, who is here to answer any questions. 
Noel Kramer with the California Farm Bureau Federation. We are sponsoring this bill to make sure that the market enforcement branch can continue operating. Um, it needs these modest fee increases to make sure that it can continue, which allows investigations of up to um, of unpaid agricultural products. I do want to note in the analysis um, there was discussion about the opposition and concern with only raising fees at the bottom tier. Currently, those um, bottom category pay $100 in licenses. It costs $136 to process those licenses. So we thought that it was fair to bring those up to $150 to fully cover the cost of that processing. Thank you. Dennis Albiani, California Grain uh, th sorry, Dennis Albiani, California Grain and Feed Association, California Pear Growers, and California Seed Association. I represent folks on b that are both processors as well as growers. I think this is a balanced uh, uh, bill to help keep the, the program uh, solvent. Kelly McKechnie on behalf of Western Growers, we're in support. Okay, any other witnesses in support? Uh, witnesses in opposition? Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Paul Cronenberg on behalf of Family Winemakers of California. Uh, we're simply opposed to the bill because of the way the fee increase is structured. Ms. Ma is correct. Um, it's basically on the lowest tier. The, the guys pay $100, and we represent small wineries. This represents small cut flower guys as well as small plants, small grain and feed, et cetera. Um, it has nothing to do with the efforts of the market enforcement branch, but we think because the activities of the branch are really focused on an orderly market in the agricultural community, um, and that the enforcement activity is basically concentrated in the higher tier fees, that the small guy shouldn't do this. Uh, Ms. Kremers pointed out that uh, if this is about the cost of licensing, we would suggest that perhaps a modest increase of $36 would cover that cost and the other 14 should be shared by everybody else. Uh, we also think that the analysis didn't address the small point that the bill allows the secretary to formalize the advisory committee in law, and that should have some cost to it because, of course, there will be some staffing that goes with it. We, without uh, an adjustment to the fee structure to spread it out to the other tiers, we ask for your no vote. I, I just wanted to clarify the market enforcement branch already has an advisory committee, and so all we're doing is codifying it so there won't be any increased cost to the department because they're already undertaking these activities. Okay, thank you. Uh, department of Finance? I'm sorry, Assemblywoman Conway, I do not have a file on this bill. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, well, the, the, the bill was uh, moved by Omni, Mom, Amiano and Mr. Cotto second with amendments. Ms. Ma, you'd like to close? Um, just respectfully ask your I vote members. Okay, um, that bill is recommended as a due pass with a, uh, a roll call uh, with Mr. Miller not voting. As amended. As amended, sorry. And Harkey also. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Ma. Next bill is 2600. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. Members, AB 2600 w would require the Medical Board of California to consider adding a continuing education course in the diagnosis and treatment of hepatitis. Move the bill. This is not a mandate. There's no fiscal effect to the Medical Board. And with me is Glenn Backus of the California Hepatitis Alliance. Good morning, Glenn Backus, Roll representing call. the California Hepatitis Alliance, 90 organizations statewide, including patient groups and community clinics in support of better hepatitis control policy. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other witnesses? Okay, then um, it is a due pass. We do have a, uh, a motion and a second, I believe, by Mr. Amiano and Mr. Solorio. Um, uh, a Republican roll call will be needed. Conway? Aye. Conway, aye. Harkey? Harkey, no. Harkey, no. Miller? Miller, no. Nielsen? Aye. Nielsen, aye. Norby? No. Norby, no. Measure passes. Okay. Measure passes. Thank you, Ms. Ma. Oh, you have another one. Oh. And I'm presenting for uh, Assemblywoman Salas, AB 2076. Yes, you are channeling okay. Ms. Salas this morning, yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, members. AB 2076 is narrowly tailored consumer disclosure and protection measure intended to provide consumers with information about the physical location of floral vendors in advertisements. Move the bill. Specifically, the bill does two things. First, it requires floral vendors who use local phone numbers to disclose their physical address in advertisements. And second, requires floral vendors who use local names to disclose their physical address in advertisements. With me is Dennis Albiani, the sponsor.
Hi, Dennis Albiani, California State Floral Association. We represent both the grower community as well as the retail flower shops. Uh, this has been an uh, ongoing problem for many years, and this bill will help address this uh, to prevent predatory practices, advertising practices from, from out of state and uh, other folks uh, in the retail floral industry. Okay, thank you, Mr. Albini. Any other witnesses? Uh, Department of Finance, you have a? Uh, we have no general fund impact for this. All right, thank you. Um, okay, this bill has been moved and seconded. Ms. Ma, you disrespectfully ask your I vote members. Okay, uh, this uh, bill passes uh, on an A roll call. Go alphabetical. Okay, Mr. Davis, would you like to present this morning? What are we doing with him? Davis has one bill in the B roll call. Good morning, Madam Chairwoman. Members, um, this bill 1914 clarifies the determination of Move anticip the bill. anticipated income for food stamp eligibility. Second. And uh, it will make sure that those who are on the uh, unemployment insurance get an accurate account and only if the county welfare department obtains a report from EDD and specifying a start date in the, in, in the specific amount of their benefits. I respectfully ask for your I vote, and we have uh, supporting Kevin Ossilian uh, from the California Welfare Rights Organization, and I don't know if Jessica uh, Bartholomew is uh, uh, Bartholo is here from the Western Center of po uh, Law and Poverty. No, but Mike Carroll from Western Center of Law and Poverty oh, is here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jessica couldn't be here today. She's out of town, so I'm presenting on, on her behalf. Western Center, I'm Mike Carroll. I, we strongly support this measure. Um, essentially, let me say it very quickly. Right now, if you apply for CalWORKs and you have an unemployment insurance claim, we assume until you get that uh, decision from unemployment insurance that you don't have any income, and therefore we give you a CalWORKs grant. On the food stamp side, counties have the choice about whether or not they want to apply the same rule on the food stamp side. Some counties do, some counties don't. This would say that all counties would apply the same rule on the food stamp rule about unemployment insurance as we do on the CalWORKs side. So during that pendency, while people are waiting for their unemployment insurance, they would get those federal food stamp dollars. Um, now, once we get the, the decision back from unemployment insurance, if they, in fact, got an award, then that would be counted as income, and then they would probably lose most of their food stamp benefits at that point. But during that immediate period when people lose their job, this would ensure that they have some income and revenue in their house so they can sustain themselves. And I would note, this has absolutely no cost. The families are already in the office. They're applying for food stamps. The county's going to make a determination. The administrative cost is going to be borne no matter what. All this does is ensure that we draw down those federal stu food stamps, get the money back into our economy, and get the sales tax revenue into the Treasury. We support the bill. Thank you. Um, any other witnesses uh, in support or opposed? Uh, Department of Finance? Sorry, I have no file on this bill. Thank you. Um, okay, Mr. Davis, this is uh, a recommended a due pass uh, on a B roll call. Uh, the bill is out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Am I for it or against it? <laughs> oh, yeah, let's just don't want to talk about it. Somebody want to move this so we don't have Thank to you, Madam Chair. Good morning, members. Uh, I'm here to present AB 2283. End of life alternatives are not something we particularly enjoy discussing until and unless we have to. Nonetheless, these arrangements will eventually require our consideration for that of loved ones that we all someday leave behind. Move the bill. Second. Uh, okay, we have so a forth and second. so on. <laughs> and I stole that from another member, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> yesterday. Yes. Uh, would um, you like to continue? I respectfully or? ask your con consideration approval. Okay. Do you have witnesses that want to talk or? In support, Madam Chair, Chris McKaylee on behalf of SCI California Funeral Services. Thank you. Uh, Department of Finance. We have minor and absorbable costs for this bill. Okay, thank you very much. It's recommended on a due pass on an A roll call. Mr. Miller, your bill is out. Thank you. 
Okay. Mr. Solorio will channel Mr. Hill. Thank you, uh, Madam Vice Chair and members. I'm presenting two bills on behalf of Assemblymember Hill. The first is uh, AB 1996. Uh, th this bill authorizes the California Board of Chiropractors Examiner to increase the annual uh, licensure renewal from 150 up to $250. I ask for your I vote. Do you have witnesses this morning? No witnesses, okay. Uh, Department of Finance? We have, uh, our analysis indicates that the bill would generate $1.3 million annually in revenue and that these funds are needed to enable the chiropractic examiner's fund to remain solvent. Okay, thank you. Oh, Mr. Hill's here. I have Mr. Hill here for technical Mr. support. I'd rather hear Mr. Solorio hear the bill. Mr. Hill, would you like to appear as a witness on your, uh, <laughs> on behalf of your, your bill? <laughs> You know, I, would just, I, would just, I would just conclude this fee hasn't been increased since 1991 and uh, lots changed and uh, it's time to authorize for an increase okay. as needed. Let's go Thank, you. For it. Thank you, Mr. Solorio Hill, or Mr. Hill Solorio. Um, okay, that bill uh, uh, has been moved and seconded yes. um, and uh, we need a Republican roll call. Conway? Aye. Conway, aye. Harkey? Aye. Miller? Miller, no. Nielsen? Norby? Okay. I'm looking at Mr. Solorio and speaking to Mr. Hill. That, that bill is out. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair and, and members. Appreciate it. And thank you to Mr. Solorio for doing a much better job than I could do this morning. I think you got more votes than I would get. You did a great job. Solorio did a great job. So that's why Solorio is there and, and where he is. Uh, Madam Chair, shall I? Uh, uh, move to AB 2616. That would be great. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, Madam Chair and members, AB 2616 is a bill. Move the bill. Thank you, members. And I respectfully ask for your I vote. This is a cost savings over the, uh, the long run and it's sponsored by the Secretary of State. Okay. Um, no witnesses that I can discern. Uh, Department of Finance. Uh, our analysis indicates that this bill would create a reimbursable state mandate with a cost of 58000 to 260000 per statewide election. Okay, thank you very much. Do you have a question, Ms. Harkey? Okay. Do we, do we have a motion and a second? Yes. Okay. Uh, this bill was recommended to pass, and it's out on an A roll call. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you, members. Appreciate it. Thanks, Lee. Mr. Ruskin? Oh my gosh, I'm not used to being tagged with. No votes on any of his bills. Oh, okay. Morning, Mr. Ruskin. Good morning, Madam Chair. Shall I begin? Yes, you I'm shall. And where will you be beginning this morning? <laughs> I'll be, well, I have two items on consent, so I won't be talking about those. I'm talking about uh, AB 2125, which I uh, realize will go to suspense. Uh, just quickly wanted to say this bill assists agencies with uh, the good management and conservation of our oceans. Uh, it is vital to ocean protection. It does two things. It assesses and coordinates the need for scientific information among agencies with ocean and coastal related jurisdiction and addresses those needs by increasing information available to those agencies. Secondly, it reviews and makes recommendations regarding marine spatial planning, which is a science-based tool. And while it is a key part of President Obama's Ocean Health Initiative, it is not yet used in California. Therefore, analysis and recommendations are needed to inform us as policymakers about this tool and its potential application in California. Importantly, let me conclude by saying that uh, this bill directs this work to be completed only when funds are available. Uh, with that, I ask the committee for its positive consideration uh, when it is placed on suspense. I have witnesses here. 
Crystal Mullenkamp on behalf of Ocean Conservancy and Support. We're pleased to sponsor this legislation because it would lead to better ocean decision making and potential cost savings for the state. Uh, this bill has no direct cost, but to the extent that some uh, funds are needed to support the OPC in this effort, those funds would not come from the general fund, but instead would come from bond or special funds that have been appropriated to the OPC for this purpose. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Reed Addis on behalf of the Monterey Bay Aquarium in support of the policy and uh, well, we're, uh, it's too bad that cost pressure language is in the analysis. We're actually very supportive of the staff recommendation and uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any other witnesses? Department of Finance, comment? Uh, yes, our uh, analysis indicates that the costs would be absorbable within the budget of the OPC. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ruskin. Thank you. I'm sure your bill will be duly considered while it's I'm on sure suspense. It will. <laughs> Okay, members, we have some bills to go back uh, that we heard as a committee before we had a quorum. Uh, as a subcommittee, we heard them, and the first one would be uh, Mr. Cook's AB 2419. We need a motion. All right, yes. For Mr. Cook's bill. Thank you, Mr. Sorio. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we have a motion and, and uh, a second. This is out on an uh, A roll call. Uh, so do pass with an A roll call. Okay, we're on to. Yes. 2785. Also, Mr. Cook, I need a motion and a second. Okay, Republicans are awake now. We have a motion and a second. Uh, this is a do, do pass out on an A roll call. Uh, Mr. Ng, yes, AB 2789. <laughs> Need a motion and a second. Mr. Ng. 2789. Okay. Moved by Mr. Cotto. Yes. Second, Mr. Slur. Yes, correct. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second uh, and a Republican A roll call, and so that uh, bill is out. Okay, Hernandez, um, AB 2080. Is that also an A? Oh, okay. Um, need a motion and a second. Okay, uh, that bill was on a due pass. That's on a, a B roll call. Um, motion, motion passes and it's out. Uh, now we have consent. Okay, members, we have consent calendar. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Uh, consent passes on a roll call. And is that it? Miss anybody? Thank you. Don't want to do that to an officer.